to another Boston Fig interview, and today we have Trevor Stricker from Disco Pixel. Okay, so I have a lot of stuff to ask you, because first of all, you actually have a big past of a lot of work that you've done. Do you want to talk about that? I'm an old guy. <laughs> I've made games for a long time. Uh, I started off, the first game I made was NBA 2K, and that was you know, a year or so after college. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was everything that you hear about Death March development the last <laughs> year before we shipped the game. Literally, I spent eight days away from the office, including weekends. And four okay. of them were my grandmother's funeral. It was All crazy. Right. Uh, and, you know, at the time, that was the next generation. Mm -hmm. It was the Dreamcast. And so not only was it new hardware and you know, new development processes, it was also uh, a pretty high profile title because this was a launch title for the Dreamcast and Sega was really relying on us to make killer apps that would make people want to buy the Dreamcast. Mm -hmm. uh, after that, more console games, Panzer Dragoon, Fantastic Four, um, and then uh, in 2008, I jumped on the social games bandwagon. Okay. With Quick Hit Football, uh, and you know this was before, well before Zynga crashed, and even before they were a world dominating company. <laughs> we were. Uh, we were a, an online social game mm -hmm. that was targeted at gamers before, you know, Kabam or any of them came along. We signed the NFL, much to EA's chagrin, and we ended up selling the company. Okay. And after that, I started Disco Pixel. Okay. And here's where you find us. That's right. And so now, tell us a little bit about some of the games that you guys have made. At Disco Pixel? Sure. Uh, so right now we're working on our first game, Jungle Rumble. Mm -hmm. It's a rhythm game where you use rhythm to control a tribe of monkeys while a rival tribe invades to steal your bananas. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, now reality, you guys were at PAX with that game. Mm -hmm. And when I walked by, at least, it had a very good reception. Uh, we were really happy with the way people responded to the game at PAX. Okay. So it's a single player rhythm game. Mm -hmm. it, when you're in a loud event hall with tons of people and blinky lights, it is the game that is the most spectacularly ill-suited that you could possibly imagine. Mm -hmm. uh, but despite that, we actually had people who would sit down in our booth with headphones and play for 30, sometimes 40 minutes. Mm -hmm. And I, I think when it, when it really, when it resonates with people, it really resonates. Okay. Now, one question I have on a side note is earlier you were talking about, you know, your death march with NBA 2K. Mm -hmm. Now you're doing indie, and I was just wondering, what are your days like now? Uh, Th I mean, it's still a lot of work. Mm -hmm. Nobody becomes an indie because <laughs> they want to, you know, have a nice, easy, safe nine-to-five job. Mm -hmm. But the risks are different. Um, first of all, whenever you're on a big team, a lot of your day-to-day -day is taken up by meetings, by, uh, you know, try keeping up, up, you know, just the overhead of, of being on a big team. Mm -hmm. um, not to mention, when you're working on a licensed game, your license holder, in this case the NBA, has a lot of say over whether they like the way you've implemented passing. Okay. And oftentimes they'll come back to you and say, no, nah, change that animation. Mm -hmm. And that takes a lot of time. Uh, I would say the, you know, the biggest difference is when you're making a basketball video game that's got NBA in the title, Mm -hmm. 
You don't have to explain to somebody why they would like that. Okay, yeah. That kind of sells itself. When you're making a rhythm game about freedom, happiness, and bananas, mm -hmm. you've got to tell somebody why they might like this. All right, yeah, I can see why that'd be a lot harder. So how do you go about doing something like that? Uh, by trying to get the word out. Uh, that's a big reason why we showed at PAX. Mm -hmm. That's, you know, why we, we talk to people like you, so, it's <laughs> so we're not laboring in secret. Mm -hmm. Very nice. So um, where can people find the, your guys' work, like website or anything like that? You can check out discopixel.com. Okay. You can go to facebook.com slash discopixelgames. Mm -hmm. um, the game's not out yet. It comes out in October for iPhone and Android. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, it's not out yet. All right. So people can just keep following it on there. Yeah, I mean, we, uh, the thing is, because this is, it's kind of a radical take on rhythm games. Mm -hmm. So you, you played it at PAX, right? I watched it. Okay. It's kind of like Patapon meets Advance Wars. Okay. And uh, so, you know, you have a traditional rhythm game, which basically has a script of button presses, and you're graded on how accurately you can press buttons to that script. Mm -hmm. This is, it's a, it's a really different concept. It's more like there's a rhythmic language you use to control this tribe of monkeys. Okay. And there's strategy, and there's puzzles involved. And when you, when you start playing it, at, you know, at first, it's like, what is this? Why? Yeah. And then you kind of trance out to it, and it's 10, 20, 30 minutes later, and you're still kind of in the midst of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's hard to design something like that because there's no genre convention. Mm -hmm. It's not like we've played games like this and we can go back on that and say, yeah, cool. So uh, another cool thing about following us on Facebook or following our website is we're always looking for people to help play test. We're always putting out new information on the game. We're mm -hmm. always putting out new music, new art, new crazy stuff. Yeah. So yeah, I have, that's one thing I think people should definitely follow you because I know what you're talking about because I saw the game and um, at least for me, I know I would have a hard time describing it and it's so much cooler when you actually get to see it. So people should definitely follow the Facebook and the website. And um, I don't know if there's anything else you wanted to add. Uh, really looking forward to Boston Fig. I think <laughs> it's fantastic to have something like that in Boston. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people may not know, but commercial video games actually started in Boston. And you could make a very strong argument that video games themselves started in Boston. Really? How so? Go on. So uh, what some people consider to be the very first video game ever was something made in the lab at MIT called Space War. Yep. Totally not what they should have been using, what at the time was a very precious, expensive, <laughs> valuable commodity like computer time. Mm -hmm. But that's what we do. Mm -hmm. The first commercial game company was Infocom. Okay. And that was actually an MIT spinoff making text adventures. Okay. You know, the Zorks, mm -hmm. Leather Goddesses of Phobos. And uh, that was a company not far from here in Cambridge. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think a lot of people don't realize that. It's like there's a lot of stuff going on right now in Boston, uh, whether it's games or even like other things like voice acting for games and sure. all that other stuff. Boston's really booming, and I think people need to realize it. <laughs> sure. Well, that's why it's great that you know guys like you are are mm. out there and and kind of uh, lifting the lid off of all these things that are happening. Hopefully, people come to realize it. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways. This was an interview with Trevor from Disco, Pi Disco Pixel, and um, you can- It's a tongue twister. That it is, only for me though. But um, yeah, so you can check him out at his Facebook in that he mentioned, and your website which is discopixel.com. And um, we're Boston Fig, you can find us at bostonfig.com. <laughs>